Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to present a Kim one emulator for Linux that I've recently developed. So I made plenty of Kim one emulators already, a few for Arduinos, one for USB32, yeah, and one JavaScript based that you can run in the browser, and my 6502 chess project has been entirely developing the browser version. But this time I thought that why not to make a Q1 emulator for Linux so that I could run it directly in terminal. So I did this and here is the screenshot of the emulator running under the cool red return. Today we'll have a look at uh, how to work with this emulator and what kind of software it provides. And obviously would we'll try to play a bit of chess uh, that I've written. So 6502 chess that I've written like some days ago, a couple of years maybe, I don't remember. Yeah, it was a long time ago, really. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, um, here are uh, within the soft, within the source, uh, the binary executable compiled, it should be run on most Linux systems. You need to make sure you have N cursors installed, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, done PTP is the file that, it's, that is created if you're trying to save your work, say you've done something and you want to save your work, so like punch in paper tape, so this will result in writing the done PTP file to disk with a specified range of addresses that you specified using the built-in KM1 ROM. And this is the source code for the emulator. So, so essentially, yeah, it consists of a uh, fake 6502 uh, 6502 CPU emulator by Mike Chambers, quite a legendary piece of software, and the particular Q1 emulator is quite small. Um, so it starts with here, Q1 serial mode emulator. So Kim ROM, we have um, all these bytes from ROM from 1800s to uh, to where. From 1800s to like 2000s almost, like 2k, okay. Uh, table of I R Q interrupt vectors here, so used by the system. And then we have uh, RAM uh, around 5k, okay, so it's like expanded version, I would say. Uh, some bytes that we can make use of within the red chip, 6530, if I'm not mistaken, the name for that. And then RAM expansion that goes like from 2000s and to the very end. Yeah. But essentially, here we have a couple of simple functions like to read uh, instructions and also to like read memory and write memory. Here we have the write memory. And a couple of, uh, yeah, essentially the only signal handler to reset, to mimic the reset button, uh, click. Like, normally you would press reset button on Kim one board, but here we need to press control backslash in order to reset this. Okay, um, yeah, this is essentially, so uh, I'm preloading a uh, break statement and then vectors to redirect to 1c00 hexadecimal. And also for the Q command, uh, which dumps paper tape, uh, the default address is 03ff. And then wherever you start, you, let's say you put to 0 to 100 and uh, press Q, this would make the uh, dump PTP file and bring to screen the bytes from your program. Yeah, uh, let's essentially have a look how this works. Uh, so within the readme, some interesting information about the layout, uh, the most important bits from user manual, uh, Rome IO routines that are very useful, okay? Um, how you can debug, so this is the Kimrom specific stuff, it dumps a program counter, status register stack points and all the registers to these addresses from ef to f5 okay and then you have the instruction set uh, to code in 6502 okay so we'll probably kick start with just running the emulator so i'm in current working directory and i just run q1 
Okay, so press and enter. Uh, I can go through the memory. I can say 0000, zero, zero, zero space, which drives me to the very first memory cell. Okay, I can type in some something there. So let's say a nine and uh, period. So this rate a nine to zero 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 zero. Then the value to write there. Let's say forty, and then let's say twenty, which means jump to subroutine. And let me remember the subroutine uh, to help with a single character. Um, one e a zero. So I say first a zero, and then one e. So going back to check things out, so load uh, to the A register the value of hexadecimal 40 and jump to subroutine 1 EA0. So if I go back uh, and now I press G and OK. Yeah, and it prints it prints the character this. Uh, I wanted to print, essentially I want to print the A letter. Did I mess up? Maybe the A letter is 41. I don't remember. Uh, G. Yeah, now it prints. Now it prints the uh, uppercase A letter. Well, this was obviously cool, but let's try to load some programs into our emulator. So, going to the readme file, we'll start with the Superman 64 by Jim Butterfield, which is the program... Uh, like. Uh, X monitor for Commodore 64. Okay, I've adopted this and recompiled things and like changed lots of things there to make it work on Kim 1. So this was quite a cool project back in the day. So the origin is 9548 and you should run it at 9548. And this is the paper tape. So I just copy control C. So it would be loaded to this location, currently nothing there, but if we do load and I then paste the monitor and then go to 9548, some bytes are there already, so 9548 and G, I'm running the monitor, so I can, for instance, uh, see the memory at where the program is loaded, there is the hex dump, I can disassemble this. 9548. This is the disassemble version. Many other features as well. But at the moment, I have I want to have a look at the memory at two cells. So we have some free stuff there. So we'll try to write a little program there, printing the new line character, carriage return new line character, and the letter A. Uh, so let's go for this. I do A stands for assemble. 2000s, where to start, and then LDA, the instant value of 13, but this is the carriage return, okay, then I want to jump to subroutine and 1EA0, and let's, okay, um, Another thing to do is to the value of 10, jump to subroutine 1EA0, and finally LDA, the value of 40, jump to subroutine and 1EA0. So disassemble at 2 thens Okay, I want to check the source code. Yeah. Uh, the NDNS has changed, which is correct. So, G to Southerns. Uh, it prints something. Oh, it prints the. Uh, yeah, prints the A symbol. Uh, yeah, 41 for A. But what's wrong with carriage return essentially and the. New line feed, I'm not quite sure. Okay, let's go to to Southends and try to fix this in place.
So this one to be changed to 41. And okay, now it prints A, which is correct. But instead of new line fade and can reach return, it prints some gibberish here, which I'm not quite sure why is that happening. Okay, I got what's wrong here. I use decimal values instead of hexadecimal ones. So, yeah, the, this was stupid. So instead of 13, uh, 13 in uh, hexadecimal, so 10 is A. It should be D, so zero D, and here zero A. Yes, and now I hope this would be correct. So G, yeah, and indeed we have the carriage return new line, and then the letter A has been printed. Yeah, so it's not very interesting maybe, but yeah, quite exciting to make sure it works properly. Okay, let's go to the next program. So we don't need this one anymore. Our next program is uh, Tiny Basic by Tom Pittman, which again, I've adopted and recompiled. Um, another interesting program, so it starts with 2000s, cold start, warm start is at 2003. Okay, um, copy this one. I just reset and go to K1 and I'm going to 2000. We've been there just a moment ago. Okay, so nothing there on start. So load and I put stuff in. And now at 2000, we have some bytes. And this is the source code. This is the binary executable for tiny basic by Tom Pittman. Um, so go in here and G, and we are in the basic territory. So I can say print hello. Cool. Now I can do print two plus two, and maybe some more complicated expressions as well. And 10. So I equals to 10. Okay, then uh, I want to... Print, right? So I print I. Okay. And now I say if I is greater than zero, then go to ten. Uh, yeah, but this time it would just be printing 10 all the time. We also need to decrement. Okay. Okay, here is our program. So we also somehow need to decrement. So say 25. We want to say i equals i minus 1. List, yeah, and run. What still doesn't work? This feels strange. This feels really strange. Hold on a sec. Okay, we need to go. We need go to twenty, not go to <laughs> a ten, because yeah, then we need we reinitialize things. So thirty, I want to say if. I is greater than zero, then go to 20 and run. Yeah, now we counting, we're counting from 10 to one and essentially we are done. Print some sort of an error. I'm not quite sure what it is like here in particular, but it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, um, yeah, tiny basic is cool. Yeah, despite the lack of uh, loops like for and while, still using the go to, you can do basic loops and if statements are also available, so it's quite cool. Especially bear in mind the minimalist amount of bytes, so this is the entire tiny basic, so quite small. Okay, um, let's now play the chess that I've written, 6502 chess. Uh, the version that did not support TTY that was uh, running on the uh, 7, 
segment LED uh, digits in a web browser emulator. And also, it was also um, tested on the real uh, old school Kim One by my friend from the US. Uh, so that version was around 717 bytes, so below below 1K. This version is slightly above 1K. Uh, it supports uh, TTY uh, in terms of prints the port to TTY. It consists of three paper tapes. So we need to upload every paper tape. So let's just restart our Kim. So copy and load paste now uh so this is the board representation fonts see okay okay so this is the board uh then we want to paste in the evaluation and finally the search the biggest part is the search so zero one zero zero here the evaluation function code comes zero two zero zero here the search comes so if you want the engine to play the move you need to run it to hundreds hexadecimal there is another interesting uh thing here is how to print the board oh let me find this uh three zero three f six so let's go to zero three f six and run from that and we have the board being printed which is cool right so eight means white to move so if we want to make a move we need to change um memory directly this is the most cool part maybe it's not cool but yeah i personally really like it so uh if i want to calculate say e2 square this is the e2 so this is six and four so 64 to 44. so if i go to 0064 we have a white pawn there. The zero nine is the white pawn. So let's erase the white pawn. Now uh, again zero three f six, and you see we just erased the white pawn. Yeah, and now we can do zero zero forty four, and here we place the white pawn, and uh, zero three f six. So we just put the Y point to E4. But also we need to change the sign because if we now ask the engine to find the move, it will make a move for white. So uh, BC is the uh, 00, zero BC is where the site to move lives. So we need to make 10, which stands for 16 hexadecimal. Okay, and 03F6. Yeah, so now it's black to move. Yeah, 10 hexadecimal is black. So now we can go to 0200 and ask the engine to make the move. So now it's searching a depth 3 takes time. So maybe we could make it uh, depth equal to uh, 2 ply depth. Uh, in that case, it would be playing much faster now. Yeah, it takes ages to complete, but let's wait. Yeah, we don't pretty much have any other choice but wait. Okay, develops the knight. Yeah, cool move. Essentially attacks the knight. So Elikine defense, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but it's too long for to wait this this long. So if I go to zero two zero zero and then the next one. So this is the search depth. If I make it equals to two, and now zero two zero zero. Uh, so it's too complicated to enter moves by hand. So I just ask the engine to play for both sides. So now we we'll find the move for white pieces and yeah it advances the pawn zero two zero zero and again now we should move the knight away and yeah we are in the early kinds defense territory cool isn't it yeah uh so this is how the program essentially plays itself yeah this is cool zero two zero zero let's try make another move uh, in order to find mate, uh, yeah, another knight has been developed. Cool. Uh, in order to find mate, there should be at least a depth of three, so it should be adjusted closer to the end game. But anyway, I hope this is sort of clear um, that 
like how we can work with this. And yeah, assuming the amount of the source code. So this is the entire bytes for uh, for the chess program. So if I go to 03FF, so this is like 1K, exactly 1K. So apart from 1K, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 80, yeah, an additional somewhere around 80 bytes uh, just for this um, CTY rendering of the board. So with 3F6. So this takes quite a lot of code to to handle. Yeah, maybe it could be done in less code. But yeah, the version that I did not print to so the CTY was exactly 717 bytes. But this one is a bit longer. So it's a bit more than 1K. 1K and around 80 bytes. And it plays chess, believe it or not. So yeah, guys, um, yeah, I want to try to play around with this uh, Q1 emulator a bit more. And, uh, you know, recently I've I've been playing around with the Wally program, the program that plays Go, the one from the Byte magazine back from 1981, uh, the article written by Jonathan Kim Millen. And... He has been explaining how to create a game of Go in that article. So I've considered a couple of attempts, both in Python. The first one was very successful. The second one resulted in quite an interesting Go playing program. Still quite weak, around 30Q, but still um, still interesting in terms of implementation. But originally, that program, Wally, was written on the unexpanded Q1, which is super cool, I think. So trying to recreate that experience is also something that I'm interested in uh, in doing this. Yeah, so maybe um, if I succeed with that, uh, I'll share this in another video. So yeah, guys, this is it from my side. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Until then, and cheese.